Monday night, Steve Sarkeesian orchestrated a masterpiece in Miami. The Broyles Award winner as college football's top assistant pushed all the right buttons on his way out the door as Alabama rolled Ohio State. Wednesday, he was introduced in Austin as the Longhorns' next coach. Sark accepted the job the day after the Tide beat Notre Dame in the semifinals, so there has been a lot to juggle in the past few weeks, but now he is on the job full time. And he joins us now on Sports Center. And Steve, first of all, welcome. Congratulations. As best you can from Monday night, really Tuesday morning in Miami, to sitting here right now with me. How, how do you best sort of describe what your timeline and your life have looked like? Well, clearly, uh, a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, it was a great game that Monday night and obviously a late night East Coast time. And, you know, getting up first thing Tuesday and, and flying into Austin and getting situated in press conference and meeting great players, you know, meet with, with you know, had dinner with Vince Young. You do all of that. And you forget about the process of, like, HR. Uh, getting yourself situated on that. Right. You, you know, you, you think about that part of the job, but then you start digging into – hiring your staff and getting all those things put into place. So it's a big order in front of you and it can feel at times if you don't handle it right, like you're, like you're drinking out of a fire hose. But you know, Scott, fortunately for me, I, I've been through this a couple times. And so you just start to prioritize and work your way through it. There have been a number of guys who've been coaches, whether it's Elaine Kiffin or Mike Loxley or you, I could keep going who go to Alabama and, and then have another opportunity after spending time there. And, and, you had success, Steve, but you spend time side by side with Nick Saban. And if you could narrow it down to, to one thing that maybe you're better at now in terms of approach than you were when you got to Tuscaloosa, what would that be? You know, I would say the discipline that he has to do his job on a daily basis, you know, just consistently, not much rocks Coach Saban's boat. You know, he's going to focus on what he needs to focus on to be the best head coach he can be. Um, and then I just tried to adopt the same thing while I was there to be the best offensive coordinator I could be. You know, there is something to the routine factor. And when people are all in the same routine, you know, you can kind of recreate that game, you know, week in and week out. A resume that includes head coach at USC and head coach at Texas is a remarkable thing. But your journey from L.A. to Austin includes a lot. What, what are you most personally proud of or, or the part of that journey that means the most to you along the way? I, I, is there a way to describe that? You know, when I got let go at USC, um, you know, there, there were, I'll be honest with you, there was a couple dark days in there, and I didn't know mm -hmm. if I'd ever get this opportunity again. I wanted it again, but I didn't know how it would happen or how I could make that happen. So I really just shifted my focus to – Day to day, how can I be the best Steve Sarkeesian today? And some opportunities came, and I decided to say no until Texas came. And I, you know, I had to take a kind of step back and say, you know, this one's a yes. And you, you, don't, you don't pass up this opportunity at Texas, in my opinion, the best job in America. And I'm fortunate enough to, to be the head coach here. And it's a great task. It's a tall task, but, but one I'm excited to, to, to go tackle. It's a massive job with massive resources, and it's one where not everybody's going to be happy with everything you do or everything you say. And when you were introduced on Tuesday, or when you talked Tuesday about the whole eyes of Texas, you said, it's our song and we're fired up to sing it. What, what do you make of what reaction is to that? Because there's going to be sort of two ways of looking at it. Well, exactly right. I, I think there's, you know, obviously the rich history and tradition of that song um, for this university and for the great teams that have played here before us. When you talk to an Earl Campbell or a Vince Young, uh, those types of guys about what that song means and, and talking about the kind of the, the history and tradition that it's laid for them um, and what that means for us, then clearly we're get, we'll have that discussion with the team when we get back into school of, of why, in my opinion, it is important for us to sing it. But, hey, that, that's our song. Um, you know, a lot of schools have a lot of rich history and tradition. That happens to be one of ours, and, and we'll look forward to singing it. As far as being on the field, Steve, in the spring and in the fall, and man, let's hope that let's hope that we got folks all over in these stadiums and we're healthy, most importantly. But what for you is the most important thing to get right as you chart this course as the head coach at Texas? Well, I think probably the biggest thing is just building the culture the way we want it from day one. Um, ultimately, we're chasing greatness. Um, you don't you don't take a job at Texas just to be happy to be a head football coach. You take this job to, to win championships, uh, to chase greatness, and that's where we have to all be on the same page to do the necessary things uh, to try to go accomplish those things. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe 
to ESPN+.